Holy Spirit, one God, amen. As you know, that we are in a very special time, the 50 days after resurrection. And as you know, that the 40 days after resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ spent these 40 days with the apostles. And um, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a mysterious uh, time. And the word mysterious is actually uh, chosen um, carefully. It is a mysterious time. Uh, that is full of mysteries. And so we'll pray that God will, will give us some of these mysteries and open these mysteries of these days uh, in front of us. Uh, we want first to read a few verses in the beginning of Book of Acts because it talks about this period of time that Jesus spent with the, uh, with the apostles before he ascended. Acts chapter 1. The first three verses. St. Luke says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. That's actually St. Luke is, is speaking to the same person that he wrote his gospel to. And he's saying the former account, that's the gospel of Luke, that's what he means. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all what Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he has chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his sufferings by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It's a mysterious time that Jesus spoke spend with the disciples uh, 40 days speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. What are these things? It's amazing that this period of time, very, very, very little was spoken about or was written about in the Gospels, the time that Jesus spent with the disciples. Why? Why the account isn't there? Why not, like the Gospels, you know, one account after the other, and one miracle after the other, and one teaching after the other? Why these things are not written here? Because this time, as I said, is a mystical time, and not necessarily a time of teaching, even though it says here that he was speaking to them about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It was not as speaking time as much as experience time. There is a time to talk about the kingdom of God, and there is a time to experience the kingdom of God. There is a time to talk about God, and there is a time to encounter him and experience him. And these 40 days after the resurrection was a time of revelation, kind of heaven on earth. Jesus appeared to them in many different ways. Many times he would appear and he would disappear right away. He wouldn't spend them one day after another after another. And it would be only appearances. And he would speak to them. He would talk to them. But words that cannot be written down here. What kind of words are these? And how important that is, because he says speaking to them about things pertaining to the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, the whole kingdom of God thing, or this mystery that we talked about, Jesus spoke about earlier when he was uh, with the disciples in Matthew 11. Matthew 11 is actually a, a chapter that is all about parables, and they call it the parables of the kingdom. And as you know, Matthew 13 starts this way, that, you know, Jesus giving them the parable of the sower. We know that. And then the disciples kind of didn't understand exactly what he wanted to say. So the disciples came in verse 10, Matthew 13, chapter, uh, verse 10. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know 
the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. Special people, the elect, the disciples, the people who believe in him, the people who believe in the resurrection only, would gather with them and tell them mysteries. What are these mysteries? If I don't know these mysteries, am I missing out? Am I missing out on a lot? Would these mysteries solve some of the problems that I may have and the struggles that I may have in my spiritual life and I'm not even aware of it? What are these mysteries? Why something is hidden? How do I know if it's hidden from me or not? What are these mysteries? It actually gets even more mysterious. When you look down at chapter 13 in the Gospel of St. Matthew, when he keeps giving parables about the kingdom of God. And let me read for you a few of these parables. They're very short, a few verses. He says in, 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 in verse 31, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it grows, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of, uh, of air would come and nest in its branches. I'm sure we've read that before. Nice. Mustard seed, planted, grow, tree. Birds of the air come, live in there. Hmm. What are the mysteries here? And why is he talking, you know, in parables? I'll give you another one. The hidden treasure. Actually, that speaks uh, well about it. In verse 44, he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all he has and buys the field. Hidden treasure, mysteries. What are these? You can say part of them is the sacraments of the church, because the sacraments are mysteries, you know, something mysterious. But is it that? What is it in the sacraments that is mysterious? The work of God in our lives and Christianity is full of mysteries. It's full of mysteries. And these mysteries are not given to anyone, but only to the believers. The same way that Jesus only appeared to the disciples after resurrection and gave them the mysteries of the kingdom, also those believers who believe in his resurrection, who would wait for him, who would want salvation, for their souls who are desperate about their lives and about the monotonous of their life and the ups and downs and all of this and I want the mysteries why is it that you know I do a lot of spiritual things and I don't change is there a mystery behind that why when I take communion I don't feel the change right away why do I keep going through the same cycles? Why am I still weak in certain areas? Why things I can't overcome? Where is God? How do I understand him? The Bible, and what is it? These mysteries of Christianity is all in the spirit and not in the physical, tangible, felt, understood way. It's beyond the understanding. The understanding is the mind. There is something beyond the mind was mentioned a lot in the New Testament called the noose. The noose is the spiritual mind. The spiritual mind of a human being. Everything that I have, there is something spiritual behind it. There are eyes, physical eyes, but there are spiritual eyes. You know, there is the thinking, but there is the mind and there is the spiritual mind. There are the ears, and there are the spiritual ears 
beyond it. And the mysteries of God is only at the spiritual level. That when we try to read it or write it or explain it, it will only be done through parables because you cannot speak about these things. You can only experience them. You can only attest to them. You can only see the results of them. But you can never put them in words. That's why none of the teaching of the 40 days after resurrection, even though these teachings are very, 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 very important, because Jesus put down everything, laid out everything for the church, but they're not written down. Why? Because they're not on, on that level of understanding. I know you want more understanding what are the mysteries. The mysteries are not understood, but they are revealed. How's that? They are not understood. You can't get a book that says the mysteries of the kingdom and read it and you get it. No. It is revealed by God in the spirit, not in this mind, and not through words. St. Paul spoke about this. Second Corinthians chapter 12. He said, when I went to heaven, or he was talking about someone went to heaven, and then he saw things that cannot even be written down. Why are these, why are they hidden? Why aren't they open to everyone? Even God said it in a, in a, in a very tough way. He said, do not put your perils before pigs. Meaning, there are perils. The, the, these perils are spiritual. They're up. And you just can't, you cannot give them to, to anyone. These mysteries are the presence of God himself to a human being. His revelation to me. His work in my life in a way that I have no idea how, but I can see the effect of it. I'll give you some examples. Uh, like the Sunday that we were talking about today. Today is the Sunday of the light. Walk in the light while you have the light. Okay. And I don't know what the light is. And I want God to give me wisdom, understanding, light. And I don't know how. I pray. And all of a sudden, I start to see things completely different. Transformation. Paradise shift in a way I think. And instead of probably being upset at someone, being extremely compassionate at someone. Something you can never explain. Someone who's been hurt by someone for years. And all of a sudden, this hurt is a change 100% to great compassion towards this person. What do you call this? What is like, what is the to-do list? What is the one, two, three recipe that you follow and you get this? There's no recipe. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. And one mystery opens my eyes to another mystery and open my eyes to be even hungry and thirsty that I understand the mysteries of God. That when I read, I don't just understand the words that are written here. Parable, seed, put, plant, tree, bird of the air. Find it exactly touching my life. I find Jonah representing Christ in my life or representing me. I find that the only words that are missing from the Bible is just mentioning my name because it applies so much to me. One of the mysteries I'll give you is the mystery of the Word of God. This is a huge mystery that people don't understand. The church, through the sacraments and through the rites, open our eyes a little bit to the mystery. For example, the way we read the Bible in the church is that we pray a prayer, a litany of the gospel, 
that God may prepare us to hear the gospel. And then the gospel is put, and the oldest guy in the church, you know, the deacons or the, the, the priest or the bishop, if he's, made, if he's there, or the pope, he would read the gospel, and the, the, the lights are lit, and everybody is standing, and it's done not as a reading, but actually as a prayer. And while the gospel is being read, I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but you find a priest is actually giving incense to the gospel. Giving incense to the gospel. Why are we giving incense to the gospel? And actually, while he's doing that, he's praying a prayer. It's called the mystery of the gospel. What is this mystery of the gospel? It's actually a very, very interesting prayer. We do it only in Lent out loud. It's always, it's, it's not out loud. It's, it's, it's always like, a, you know, something that the, the priest just prays it, you know, uh, in, uh, inaudibly. But in, in Lent, we do it actually with Matanias. We, we collect all the requests that we want from God and say it in a very, very short version. You know, the sick and the needy and the this and the air and the, you know, the traveler and the president and those are in prison and all of this. Why this compacting? Because we believe that this is the true presence of the Lord Jesus Christ himself when this gospel is read amongst the believers. That's a mystery. How? What does he do when this gospel is being read? He does things. Maybe I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't understand it. But with faith, as I'm a believer, I could see the effect of it. Could be light bulbs going on, forget about it. Maybe the gospel is read, and you totally forgot even what was read in the church. But because you received this mystery, then later on, tomorrow, the day after, a week after, one of these verses just jump on you. Where did they come from? That's the mystery. It was hidden there. It was received. It was restored somehow. The more I discover these mysteries, the more I become hungry and thirsty for that. The more I become hungry and thirsty for that. But they are all on a spiritual realm. It's not on the emotional, mental, Thinking, practice, no, it's all in a spiritual realm, spiritual life. I cannot see it, I cannot touch it, but I can see the effect of it. St. Paul says that. You can see the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, self-control. So when I, when, I, when I find these things happening to me, wow. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Then, really, I, I receive something very, very powerful. The Lord Jesus Christ, in his apparition, and during this time, want to open the eyes of our heart on these mysteries of the kingdom. My friends, if we transfer the Bible to ways to live like it's a nice way to live then we are no different than many other religions who took a lot of principles from the Bible and they actually are living them the Bible is not just to be lived and practiced but the Bible is a spirit to be grasped and to fill me the Bible is a, is a, is a person it is the Word of God. It is the Logos of God. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Then when I read these books, they're not just some ideas that will come and convince me to live a better life, but it's a spirit that comes to me and then fills me with a person and would do the things that I can never, ever do. When you read these things, it's very, very, very hard. But when I pray these things, when I say, the Lord who gave this 
would give me and would fill me and would open these things in my heart, then I truly discover these mysteries. They are revealed to me, revealed the mysteries of God. The church took most of the mysteries and put them in certain practices. Uh, of course, the sacraments of the church are the mysteries. What are the mysteries? That I partake of something tangible, and I may not feel that I'm really partaking of body and blood, but they are the true presence of the Lord Jesus Christ inside my life. How? And what is the effect of it? You know, again, when I believe, I will be able to see the results of that. That's, these are the mysteries. The mysteries are not just practicing. It's not when you take bread and wine and you pray these prayers, then you partake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we put it down to that level, and that's when the sacrament loses its strength. Yes, these things are written, and you do the things that, that, that Jesus said. You take the bread and the wine and you pray over them. But that's not the point. That's why the Lord didn't give them one, two, three, four, five. He said, it's the spirit of it. It's your motive. It's you getting together as one body and doing that. It's the love in that. It's feeling the one body of Christ in that. It's practicing. It's believing in that one body. And then the true presence of the Lord Jesus Christ will be in you and in our community and will unite them in one body. How mystical work. Mysterious work. But it cannot be just summed up in one, two, three, four, five. No, it's a person it's, it's a revelation. It's the heart of God himself. St. Paul, as you know, uh, he, he, he writes that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He said, I delivered you what I have received from, from the Lord. And he talks about the com communion. He talks about Eucharist. That he, on the last supper, he took bread and wine and he blessed. He said, I received that from the Lord. He didn't say, I learned that from the Lord. How did, he, how did he teach you, Paul, these things? I'm sure it was not in instructions one, two, three, or else he, would have, he, wouldn't have, he would have written it down very, very well. But that's, it's not that. So when we have the sacraments and we don't get the mystery of it, then we lose the power of it. Another example. Confession. Sacrament. You go, you confess your sins, you get absolved. Okay. But I, I don't feel that power. And I go back to the same sins again. And I don't feel it makes any difference to me. Yeah, because there are some secrets, some mysteries in that. One of the mysteries is the mystery, mystery of openness, the mystery of obedience when I obey, when I don't understand anything. When I open my heart, then I receive something special. It's not when I go and throw a list or read a list. It's beyond that. And when I know how to do this, and when I practice that, then I find that there are some real presence of God, real changes that he is doing in my life. That's why the Lord appears to them in different ways after the resurrection. Different ways and different shapes. They didn't recognize him. Every single time, they didn't recognize him. Did he look different? Probably. Why didn't they know him? Probably he didn't want them to be attached to a person, but more to the incarnate 
son of God rather than just be attached to a person. And he explained and revealed these mysteries to them. Um, when I experienced the revelation of these mysteries in my life, Christ's presence, opening a verse in front of my eyes, showing me things in my life that I've never ever seen, I would understand that this is light, this is presence. Sometimes someone comes and tells me, I discover something really, really, really bad in myself. And after I listen to that, I get really, really excited and tell them, this is good news. I said, what are you talking about? What good news? I'm just telling you horrible things. I say, yeah, but discovering these horrible things, it means there are some light that came inside and showed you this, because this has been always there. But the light has shown inside of you and, 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 and has shown you that. That's good news. That's his presence. That's the mystery. And one mystery after another, we understand the mind of God and the heart of God towards the church. And we'll find that the church and the Bible are just completing each other in a beautiful way and a spiritual way beyond the here and now and my problems. Yes, God wants to deal with my problems, but not on a physical and a seen level, maybe higher, maybe on, on a spiritual level where the news, the, 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 the spirit of my mind is more open to that. So this is the time. Also, the mysteries will be revealed in different ways. One of the mysteries, for example, is when Jesus said, if two or three gather in my name, I will be in their midst. What is that? It's a mystery. How and why, when two are gathered in his name, he will be in our midst. Meaning, if we meet together, with a spiritual purpose, and God is our goal, we're seeking his face in love between two people that there is a special presence of God. I don't see him present. Yeah, I don't see him. But at the same time, I could notice that the discussion that went through, or the revelations, or God may allow him to say something just clicked in my mind and in my heart. There is a difference between we're just getting together, we're, we're hanging out, and maybe we're praying together, or we are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ himself to be in our midst. So the faith will make the mysteries revealed to me. Another example. These little things, but it will show you that the gospel is full of these mysteries. Remember one of the saintly fathers who was the, 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 the father of confession of two of the popes of the church, Pope Krollos and Pope Shenouda. His name is Abuna Mikhail Ibrahim. He was a priest, simple priest, but uh, uh, amazing. And uh, uh, he had all the mysteries of God open before him. So when he would go and visit a sick person in a hospital, he would t take off his shoes before he enters into the room. And that was not for any uh, sanitary reason or anything like this. But he's saying, I'm going to the altar because Christ is present. He said, if you, if you visit the sick, you visited me. Hmm. Apparently, what Jesus was talking was not as symbolic. When you visit a sick, then it's a nice thing as if you visited me. No. There is no as, there are no f's. If he said something, he would do it, and he would keep, keep it. And I would, uh, I would see the effect and the blessing of his presence in such a thing. 
we had a trip uh, to um, a mission trip a few years ago, and the missionary group, uh, part of the program was visiting jail, some prisoners. And they went, spent the whole day in jail. With, uh, it, was, it was like uh, jail for women, and all the ladies went. We were not with them. The ladies went, spent the day. It was unbelievable. They said, we cannot explain what happened inside. Why? Why don't you tell us? One, two, three. You know, you know that's how men communicate. You know, well, give us a report. What's going on? No, can't explain. But there was just unbelievable, uh, nice spirit that is carrying everyone and just filling us with joy that I can't explain. We were in prison, but we were very joyful. The same way St. Paul was in jail and was also very, very joyful. So these are the mysteries of the kingdom that Jesus explained to his disciples, and they are yet for them, for us to explore. One last story about Abu Namkhail Ibrahim also, saintly man. He would talk to someone who is down, depressed, confused, and he would tell him something very strange. He would tell him, why don't you live your baptism? What? What do you mean live my baptism? I was baptized like years and years and years ago. Yeah, but this baptism, it's a mystery. It's a well inside of you, a well of blessings and grace and presence of God. Why don't you live that? Would you explain to me? It's a mystery. How can I explain that? Why don't you live your baptism? Okay, let me ask him, what are the blessings that I received in that baptism? And the sonship to God. And, you know, sometimes someone is, is really, really down. And it was a prayer, it was something, uh, uh, just crying to God. All of a sudden, something is, a, a light bulb is coming. What is it? I'm the child of God. Yeah, well, you just knew that you're a child of God. You were the child of God yesterday and today and tomorrow. Yeah, but how can I be the child of the king? I hear this a lot. That's why, you know, I'm telling you. And you hear it from people, but you don't understand. The, they are seeing something that you don't see. How come I'm the child of God and I ask for things? I should be very rich. Okay. I feel very rich now. Okay, good for you. And then you leave and say, you know, something is wrong with this person. I'll tell you another, another way how you see these mysteries. Someone gets into a car accident or gets into a problem and God saves them. Or maybe they, they just, uh, they get off of like a ticket, you know, the, the police stopped them and didn't give them tickets. And they tell you a huge miracle that happened to them. And when you listen, really, <laughs> seriously? Is this like the big miracle you're talking about? You don't understand. But they have this kind of revelation that they can't even explain. I used to listen to these things and just laugh inside. But when I matured a little bit, I started to, to see, yeah, I want to see God in that. I want to get some of this revelation. I become jealous of these people. I want some of these revelations in my life. Everything we, we, we have that the Lord has given us is a mystery on a spiritual level. And they are yet to be explored. Not to be explored, I'm sorry, this is the wrong word. To be revealed to us, to those who want, those who are keen, and those who are open and receive from these mysteries that will solve every single struggle and confusion that we have in our practical life. They are not just spiritual things to, to solve spiritual things, but to solve the practical things in our life. May God give us during this time, this is the time of revelation, this is the time of grace, this is the time of blessing, to give us from his resurrection these mysteries.
Glory be to God forever and ever.